thank you all. It is truly a most wonderful occasion which brings us all together today to celebrate. This is John Gowan's patron. So many, many distinguished guests, and as I look around, so many dear friends from many, many aspects of my life. First, may I thank our splendid young musicians from the King's Guild. when I say that this generation in Australia will be very, very fundamental to the hope of the world, the way forward, peace and prosperity, and I mean prosperity too, not for us, but for those who are denied prosperity at the moment in the Asian Pacific route. Because I see young Australians going everywhere with the same gentle but intrepid attitude of His Royal Highness Prince Charles building bridges quietly, engendering trust wherever they go. I see this in China, I see it in Indonesia, amongst the Korean people, across the Pacific Islands, and uh, these young men and the women who have received fine educations in our society will carry those messages of integrity forward, integrity and service, which no one will no one in the world more than our monarch has espoused and the court, I believe, is your kindness as well. Well, I um, was deeply touched, Mr. Bill, to hear that message read by, by you from His Royal Highness. There was certainly a personal feeling within it for all of us, not just for myself. He um, has a deep and abiding and unflinching love for the Australian people, which of course they from this time in the school in Geelong. And it gives me a great sense of joy indeed to, to read and hear the words that his mother has expressed in the last few days. Although familiar to many of you, I'd like to read them. Her Majesty says, as we celebrate the many extraordinary achievements of the Prince's Trust today. This was on the visit to the Prince's Trust. So too, I should briefly like to reflect upon the role of the Prince of Wales, who has given such enduring inspiration. In public life, highlighting the success of individuals can be a hazardous and invidious occupation. But as the Prince of Wales, our son, approaches his own 60th birthday, may I say that we, me, myself, and the Royal Highness of Britain, we are both enormously proud to have been reminded here of his personal contribution to remarkable organisation. And of course, the Prince of Wales is a champion to over 400 charitable organisations and takes a clear interest in them. He's also defied criticism of many people in his attempts as a diplomat to build bridges in areas which were unpopular. And he's certainly been someone who was fearless in his almost lifelong advocacy for respect for the environment, for sustainability, for guarding, guarding the natural and the moral heritage and as well as that of having some respect in architectural design. These sorts of courageous ventures always attract criticism, but it's very interesting to see how over the years, Prince Charles, Charles' vision for so many of those aspects of the quality of life for, dare I say, the little people as well as those not so disadvantaged, has borne fruit, and more and more across the world, people are espousing those, uh, those original thoughts of his. He's lived that out in his own garden. He's lived it out in his travels. And there I say also, in the upbringing of his two sons, both of whom demonstrate extremely humane attitudes 
to be a disadvantage to those around the world. I'd like to share with you a vignette of Prince Charles' most recent visit to Australia. Last year it was very brief and uh, he sent a message to uh, say he'd like to leave as many people as possible for those organisations who were caring for others and who were caring for the environment, built and also the wider environment of water conservation, carbon footprint, etc. So we had a reception for him at Government House and um, we were also graced by the presence of Mr. Denville. I was conducting the press from group to group and uh, in introducing him. And uh, when we reached Philip, do you remember this, Philip? And I, uh, I said, oh, here's a, a fine Australian, Mr. Philip Benmore, who is president of the Monarchist Club. His Royal Highness said, oh my God, surely you're an endangered species. <laughs> Australian our own laughter and um, I must also touch on uh, something a little more sensitive. Uh, there was a great deal of discussion at the time of Princess of Wales' death and a polarisation of people for and against the Prince and certainly subsequently, uh, some time later in his remarriage, people felt they had a right to comment. My own encounters with him have always indicated a man of inner nobility and great sensitivity. But after that reception, at that reception uh, at Government House, he wanted to walk through the grounds of Government House and down the backyard, out through the back gate, and down to Man of War Steps. You know, no, no secret service or security or fanfares or whatever. So we gingerly trot our, tra tra our way down that path. And uh, there were many, many, many young people. I was astounded at the number of young people there welc welcoming him and waving him. But there were a couple of older people who were holding up battles which just uh, said, what about Princess Diana? So I stood in front of, tried to stand in front of her. It was an expression of great insensitivity and, and rudeness and uncalled for it. I tried to disguise it. He, and he said, don't worry, I know, and I've, I still feel deeply about the best too. That was just, so that sensitivity, that awareness, and that generosity, you know, he, he could have, felt, uh, you know, upgraded by that or perhaps felt that he, his presence there was uh, an embarrassment, uh, but he handled it in the most uh, generous, generous way. I'm hoping that he will visit Australia again and that we, more people, will be able to see uh, the inner nobility in this unfortunate man, this fearless man, who has gone ahead espousing causes which we now know deserve our support. Uh, Princess Trust certainly, and his hard work for that in charities with which he's been associated, has touched the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and with them for the people. And it would appear to me too that his sons will carry forward that uh, devotion to duty in a way too that comes easily to them and the battle which they espouse. So I would like to um, you to join me all in sharing a toast to his Royal Highness, Prince of Wales, Prince Charles.